This is kind of a favorite on students because it, it's very difficult to look at this and go, what's exactly going on here? We have a pulley that's attached to the ceiling. It's allowed to turn around. We have a rope across that pulley that comes down here around another pulley, and then it's attached back to here. This is the housing of the pulley, so the pulley can turn around. This pulley can turn around, and we have a mass attached to the center of this pulley, a mass equal to 10 kilograms. How much force is required to keep everything in place? So where do you go with that? Well, recognizing that there are, even though this is one single string, let's assume we, the tension here, we'll call that T1, we'll call the tension in this part of the string T2, we'll call the tension here T3, and we'll call the tension here T4. All right, now, notice that in a system like this, T1, and, oh, and here, let's call this T5. We have another string right there, T5. Now notice that T1 and T3 have to be equal to each other because it's one continuous string going over a single pulley and the distance from the center of the pulley to here is the same as the distance from there to there. Since the distances are here the same, the tensions must be the same. So we can say safely that T1 equals T3. Then we can look at this pulley right here. Let's draw a little box around it, like so. And then we can look at that. Notice that for T2 and T3, there are two strings that are, it's really one string that goes around this pulley. The distance from the center of the pulley to there is the same as the distance from there to there. If that's the case, then T2 and T3 must also be equal to each other. So we can say T2 is equal to T3. And finally, when we look at these three tensions, Notice that if we draw a free body diagram, let me put it over here. So here's that bottom pulley. Here we have uh, T2 in the upward direction. Here we have T3 in an upward direction. And here we have T5 in a downward direction. Notice that since this is a static situation, all the forces in the upward direction must equal all the forces in the downward direction so that there's no net force in the y direction, which means that T2 plus T3 must equal to T5 in magnitude. All right, so that's established now. Now if we look over here, here we can see that if we draw another free body diagram, but right here, we have one tension coming up this way, which is T4. We have three tensions downwards, so we have T1, we have T2, and we have T3. Again, since this is static and there's one force pulling this up, there's three forces pulling down. Again, you can say that since it's static, there should be no net force in the y direction, which means that the force upward, T4, must equal the three forces downward, T1 plus T2 plus T3. So now we have all our relationships here and here. So now we can say, well, T5 must equal to the weight hanging from that pulley, which is the weight of that uh, 10 kilogram mass. And I'm looking for my red pen right here. So this is equal to mg, which is equal to 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is equal to 98 newtons, which means that T5 must equal 98 newtons. So that's one of them. So T5 is equal to 98 newtons. All right. Now, we know that T2 and T3 must be equal, and we know that the sum of those two must equal T5 like that, which means that we can replace T2 by T3. So we can have T2 plus T2 is equal to T5, which means that 2T2 is equal to T5, or T2 is equal to one half of T5. So since T5 is 98 newtons, T2 is half of that, which is 49 newtons. And so we can say that T2 is equal to 49 newtons, half of T5. And since T2 and T3 are equal, we can say that T3 must therefore also equal to 49 newtons. And then we see here that T1 is equal to T3. That means that T1 is equal to 49 newtons, and now we come up here and say that T4 is equal to the sum of T1, T2, and T3, which means that it's equal to the sum of these three, so this is equal to T5, oh, not T5, T4, I got the wrong subscript, T5 
and so this is equal to 147 newtons, simply adding those three together. Now, how much force is required to keep everything in place? Well, since T1 is equal to 49 newtons, we need 49 newtons to keep in place something that has a mass of or a weight of 98 newtons. So you see that these pulleys are pretty nice. We can actually, by slowly pulling with a force of 49 newtons, we can slowly lift a mass or a weight of 98 newtons upward. So that's the advantage. It's called mechanical advantage by using these kind of pulleys. So that's how you deal with pulleys, and that's how you look at the tensions and all the strings within a pulley system like that.